Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Natmi. Today we're discussing the temporal and infratemporal fossa. And along with that, I'd like to give you a little bit of an overview of the otic ganglion. So do not forget to subscribe to my channel and let's get started. So there are two types of fossa. One is this uh, temporal fossa. And then there is this infratemporal region where you'll find the infratemporal fossa. It is lying in the infratemporal region, which is the region that lies below the temporal region. Obviously, that's what the name says. That's what it means. This entire area you can see in the norma lateralis, which is bounded inferiorly by the zygo zygomatic arch. Above the zygomatic arch is known as the temporal fossa. All right. There's no such thing as a supratemporal fossa. It's only a temporal fossa because this is the tempor temporal region. And just below the zygomatic arch, this area you can see right here is known as the infratemporal fossa. Let's talk about the temporal fossa. It is bounded uh, superiorly by the superior temporal line, if you remember we talked about in the normal lateralis. Posteriorly, it is bound by the inferior temporal line, which was continuing as the supramastoid crest. Uh, inferiorly, it is bound by the zygomatic arch. And this zygomatic arch actually separates the supra and infratemporal regions, all right? Anteriorly are the frontal and the zygomatic bones. The floor of this fossa is found formed by the frontal, sphenoid, temporal bone and the parietal bone. So let's talk about the contents of the temporal fossa. These are the T, M, Z, D. And all of these, I'm going to give you a hint for remembering the contents of both the temporal fossas. And the shortcut is that everything is temporal. Every content here has the word temporal in it. All right, that's the shortcut right here. So this is the temporalis muscle. M is for the middle temporal artery. Z is for the zygomaticotemporal artery. And D is for the deep temporal artery plus nerve. So you can see all the contents have the uh, temporal word in it. All right. Now let's talk about the infratemporal fossa, which is lying just below the zygomatic arch. Now where it is exactly located, as you can see, is that you know that the mandible lies right here, right? So guys, remember, it does not overlie the mandible. The infratemporal fossa actually is deep to the mandible. So you can see the lateral boundary of this fossa is fo formed by the ramus of the mandible. So guys, if I take a coronal section, this is the ramus of the mandible. This right here is the zygomatic arch. This right here is the skull with the lateral pterygoid plate and anteriorly is going to be the maxilla. So guys, the boundaries of the infratemporal fossa are formed anteriorly by, what do you think? This is the maxilla bone. So it's posterior surface of the body of the maxilla. All right, the roof or the upper part is formed by the sphenoid is coming here. The infratemporal surface of the sphenoid bone is the roof of this entire uh, infratemporal fossa. So uh, the sphenoid is lying over here. Laterally, we've discussed is the mandible bone. And finally, medially is this plate coming out of the sphenoid bone known as a lateral pterygoid plate. So guys, this area right here, this area and put the mandible on top. So with, with deep to the mandible, that area is known as the infratemporal fossa. And the contents of that area, the shortcut to remember the contents are by remembering the P, M and C. So all the contents revolve around these letters. The first important content are the pterygoid muscles. Obviously, guys, the muscles of mastication arising from the pterygoid plates, obviously, are going to lie in the infratemporal fossa. So the pterygoid muscles plus another P is for the posterior superior alveolar artery. This is a branch of the maxillary artery. That takes us to the M. The M stands for, we've talked about a structure, very important structure, the mandibular nerve lies in this. The maxillary artery obviously lies in this because it's giving its posterior superior alveolar artery branch. So maxillary artery. And since the artery is lying here, let's also write down that the maxillary nerve also lies here. All right. And finally, C is for the corda tympani nerve. This was coming from the facial nerve. It carries gustatory fibers for the tongue plus some secretomotor fibers for submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. Guys, this is from the seventh nerve. This is a branch of the seventh nerve, the corda tympani nerve. All of these are lying in the infratemporal fossa. So guys, these are the contents and boundaries of the temporal and infratemporal fossas. And I'll just give you a little bit of uh, understanding of the otic ganglion. Now, this is a ganglion lying chiefly in the infratemporal fossa. Uh, if you see topographically, it is actually related to the mandibular nerve. If you remember, a mandibular nerve was traveling and this came in the pathway of the mandibular nerve, the otic ganglion. However, functionally, this ganglion is related to the ninth nerve. This is known as the glossopharyngeal nerve. 
So basically, otic ganglion is a structure that is responsible for supplying this gland kept in your face called the parotid gland right in front of your ear, right? This parotid gland somehow needs fibers for it. And the otic ganglion is this responsible person that is going to deliver all kinds of fibers to the parotid gland, including the parasympathetic, the sympathetic, and the sensory fibers via different nerves that will relay or either relay or either pass through the otic ganglion. Basically, your otic ganglion has to get all of these fibers to the parotid gland. That is the major function of this ganglion. And it is chiefly parasympathetic ganglion, all right? Uh, so obviously, it will have all of these roots coming from somewhere, right? So that's what we need to study. So the first, it has three roots, the parasympathetic root, the sympathetic root, and finally, the sensory root. Overall, this ganglion is a peripheral parasympathetic ganglion where does the parasympathetic root come from the parasympathetic root is given it's the parasympathetic root is also the motor and the secretomotor root because guys remember the parasympathetic function of any gland is going to be secretomotor so whenever parasympathetic system is activated means secretions are activated the parasympathetic root comes from your lesser petrusal nerve now here you need to know how the lesser petrusal nerve is formed the lesser petrusal nerve is formed by the inferior salivatory nucleus it, uh, the story of the lesser petrusal nerve begins in the inferior salivatory nucleus this gives preganglionic fibers that go in that travel in the glossopharyngeal nerve the glossopharyngeal nerve then gives a tympanic branch. The tympanic branch then joins the tympanic plexus. From the tympanic plexus, your lesser petrusal nerve emerges. Now, the lesser petrusal nerve has the preganglionic sympathetic fibers, right? So, the lesser petrusal nerve now enters the otic ganglion, relays right over here, and postganglionic fibers will leave it within the auriculotemporal nerve. And we've studied this in the mandibular nerve. This is going to go where? To the parotid gland. And the major function of this ganglion is completed because now the fibers will go to the parotid gland. Next root is the sympathetic root. The other roots are a lot simpler than the parasympathetic. Sympathetic root is going to come from superior cervical ganglion. These are going to be postganglionic fibers, all right? Postganglionic fibers are going to come, join the plexus around the middle meningeal artery, and then they go to the otic ganglion. And they do not need to relay over there because they're already postganglionic. And then they just go through the auriculotemporal nerve and to the parotid glands. The sensory root of this ganglion comes from the auriculotemporal nerve itself. Some other fibers include that nerve to medial pterygoid also has these motor postganglionic fibers going into this ganglion that directly go to the tensor villi palatini and the tensor tympani muscles without relay. We've already talked about this and the corda tympani nerve is also connected to this ganglion. So guys, that is all you need to know about the otic ganglion. Really hope you understood the lecture today. Uh, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Until then, thank you so much for watching.